Welcome to the Highest Fuck Podcast with your boys, Matt, War Games Jackson, and Jedi Joe Survivor Series. <laughs> cool. Kyle Cage. And our boy, Kyle Cage Foster. What's up, y'all? And the Survivor Series review. We're here with the Survivor Series review Yo, podcast. Like, yeah. like, comment, subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Comment, tell us what you want us to review and talk about. Yeah. Also, we're going to send you down to Southwick Plaza, Tobacco and Vape. Blue Park Vape Shop. Blue Park Vape Shop. Cane Creek. Cane Creek. In Danville, Virginia. Man, we little fucking Virginia. Um, yeah, we're going to do all that. We're gonna, and then we got Kyle Foster Music. Go over there. It'll be tagged in the description. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we got that. We got the Pittsburgh Pile Driver Podcast. <coughs> Go check them out. They need some love. Um, <coughs> and, and what else was it? Conan and Disco's podcast. Oh, yeah, the, um, the Harassers. The no, Harassers. <laughs> Anyway, no, uh, yeah, whatever they call it. Jim Cornette's podcast. Jim Cornette, definitely official corn Jim Cornette. But anyway, go check them out. Um, thanks for the person, uh, the person that didn't commented last time. Thank y'all for commenting. Oh yeah, the guy who told us we had the best podcast ever. Thank you again yeah. for that. And the one that said, and the friends something who was said talking about, something about oh, to watch they party. want us to watch party. They want yeah. us to do live might, stream yeah. of ourselves reacting to wrestling, and we can do that. Yeah, We've I was done it before. Do. Yeah, I was thinking about doing it tonight, but I had to charge my phone. But anyway. You know what I'm saying? We had uh, a good introduction into Survivor Series. Oh, it was dope, dude. It was a great Survivor Series introduction. Just the the whole the siren. Split. Yeah, the whole purge sound and shit. Blowing up, exploding fire around the ring, dude. Ozzy they War brought Pigs. the cage down and War Pigs was playing. Dude, it was the dopest intro to a pay-per-view I've seen in a long time. Yeah, it was, it was really good. It was cool. <laughs> Well, we started this whole show off with the women's war games. <coughs> started the whole show odd. off with the women's war games. We expected there to be a war games at the beginning because they had to wreck the set enough and then be able to clean it up, but we didn't know what yeah. you know, what war games it was going to be. Well, I figured it was going to be the women's because I think they do that every year. But that match was crazy. It was some pay-per-view recently that we watched. They just started with the, the men's big match. There we go. Yeah, the the world title match that started the whole thing that one time. Crown Jewel. Crown Jewel. Yeah. 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 The jewels of Crown. <laughs> uh, <coughs> yeah, we started off pretty strong, I yeah. think. I mean, it was, it was some things in there, you know, we were laughing, carrying on probably. You know, of course we were. Damn. Dude. Some things that happened. And, At the beginning. The ear sky thing. <coughs> <coughs> it was Becky Lynch. And Bailey that started the match. Which was a good start. Yeah. You know. And Becky Lynch, of course, started first and just came in and did what she did. She brought in... Did she bring in any weapons? Not the first two people. No. She didn't bring in any weapons. Bailey didn't bring in any weapons. And then EO Sky came in, brought in a trash can... I think Kyle was the first person to bring in some, but Kyle was also. Shotzi came in with the chairs. I think she Shotzi was, came in with the chairs. She was the first person to actually come in from the cage. Okay. Yeah, because Kai's the one that brought it in from the outside. I pushed yeah. it through the, the hole. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Dakota Kai gave Bailey the first weapon that was introduced into the match. Dakota Kai brought a kendo stick through the cage into the match to give yep. to Bailey when she was fighting against Becky. Yep. And then <coughs> Shotzi came in with the chairs. Yeah. yeah. There were like three of them, I think. And by this point, the crowd was already chanting, We want tables. Yeah. That was before even Asuka got in there. Yeah. Or before any, you know, anybody last got, got in there. Last. Yeah. yeah. I think it was Shotzi that they started with the We Want Tables. Yeah, I would have thought she would have, but, you know, her little scrawny arms couldn't pick a table up and put it in there by herself. Yeah. She had no help at all. So then... Kyle wasn't going to help her. We had... Yeah, so it was Becky and Bianca 
or not Bianca, Becky and Bailey, and then Sh- Shotzi was the first. Shotzi one, yeah. and Dakota Kai. I'm not sure of the order. Dakota Kai wasn't in the match. Not Dakota Kai. Eos Kai. I lost. Who? And then Andre. Oh, right. Bianca. Oh, the beginning and the end. I know Oscar was last. Yeah. And I'm Bianca sure. and Kyrie Sane. And then <clears throat> it was Charlotte was last. Charlotte me. and Oscar. Oscar. Y'all fact check him. He's probably right. But um <laughs> That was the order of entrances. I can't remember exactly weapons, but I I did purposefully remember order of Y'all entrances. comment down below was Joe right. And please, <laughs> yeah, fact check me on that. But Yeah. We're fitting to find out. But I thought that match was pretty phenomenal to start the whole show off with the crazy it shit was, that it was, was crazy. done. I EO. Mean, EO put a trash can on her came, face. Yeah, put a trash can over her head. And jumped off and the top. And came off the top of the cage. Yeah. In a crossbody cross block. I mean, it just looked fucking. It was wild. The way she jumped off looked kind of. And then I don't Charlotte. Know. It was something about it. Charlotte came off the top of the cage. Did a moonsault. Did the a moonsault. And almost. You no, know, she kicked. I think she kicked the pirate Eo in, the, in the head. I think she kicked. Yeah, she always aims to like land on her feet, even though she's going to be catched. Just yeah. in case That's she why it misses. Looks, yeah. yeah, looks awkward. Yeah. yeah, she's so tall though. And so. Kyle was right. He was like, "She's going to flip too early. She's going to come down." And she almost she did. She almost came down on her feet, and she kicked the. I think she kicked guy in the I head. She, I thought she kicked Pretty damn sure. Kyrie in the face. Mm, Somehow, I, I don't know. I think she kicked both those girls in the face. <laughs> She don't care. She's she's the queen. She's gonna kick everybody in the face, you know? No. You know. They were all facing so they could look at her, so they kicked her in the back of the head. But yeah. Well when the last person got in from Oscar's team, they had all these kendo sticks because Oscar did. went insane and just brought in everything. She brought in all four kendo all sticks stuff. and the table that needed to be brought in. Yeah, and then like they just started the war off down kinder sticks swinging. Mm, beating the crap out of and then the Becky ended team. up putting Bailey through a table with the rock. I mean, not the rock bottom. Get the back. The, the back back bottom. Back handle slam. The back handle slam. No, that's the man handle slam. Man handle slam. What's the back? I don't know. I just named it that. I What's was her Becky around. thing though? I don't it's know. Something. The disarmer. No. Well, we thought it was over when she had that on. Uh, I think it was the sky. And then Bailey broke that pin up. Yeah. Or not that pin. That submission up. Yeah. I thought it was wild. World Games was pretty wild in the beginning. The women, Becky won the match. Yeah. That's right. She took Bailey out. I'd give it four stars. Yeah. I, I, yeah, i give it four stars. That's where I, you know, I don't give anything top scores. I, I give it four, four and a half. Yeah. I will not give it a five. But I'll say four. So we're, not, we're not as tough as Dave Meltzer, but yeah. it still takes a lot to get five stars out of any of the three of us, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'll be throwing them out there. But, <laughs> but that was a four star. So <laughs> He's the Melvin for sure. Well, no, he, that was kind of five or she got yeah, back. There you there go. He just gave it five stars. Yeah, well there anyway, so that's what happened. So <laughs> Set corrected. Yeah. So I just hope we're not messing any Gunther and Miz's. Right well, now. you're getting ready to go in in the second yeah, So, But yeah, the great, great first match. It was a match. great first match. It was. Y'all can the like and subscribe great. and stuff brutal like that. Match. It was brutal. We're moving from place to place. That's like, what we comment, do here. subscribe, follow. Hit we're that the, notification bell. This is the highest fuck podcast. We're the walking With podcast. With you boys. The highest fuck walking podcast. With you boys. With your boys, Matt Jackson, Joe Cool, and Kyle Cage. Kyle Cage. Oh, Kyle. Oh. And we're back with our review of Survivor Series War Games. We just finished Santos Escobar and Dragon Lee, but we also haven't yeah. reviewed the match with the Miz and Gunther. The Miz yeah. and Gunther match, I was actually very impressed. Gunther is who he is, and it's, you know... He is very dominant. He is going to be strong. He's going to do what he's going to do. I was entertained by Miz's part of the match, so it made up for Gunther's lack of entertainment. <laughs> Sorry. Well, sometimes you can have a stale face or a stink face and still get something over. And still be the most dominant force. You don't need glitz and glam, and you don't need a cartoon character to be Gunther. You just have to be Gunther. 
You have to wake up and breathe success. I don't think you've watched enough Walter matches if you don't think he's your team. Yeah, I know. If you haven't seen, you haven't seen enough. The Will Ospreay versus him when he rippled his chest. But they slow moed it too. It's all over the world. It's a slow mo video out there of his chest rippling as a water. They made it all about that though with the Miz. They were like, Miz, you're just an entertainer. So you want to throw that out there in this segment, right? <laughs> you gotta expect the backlash. That's what I want in a wrestler. I want Last somebody wrestler. who's entertaining. Yeah. Who's Miz. going to make me feel something? Miz is very entertaining. Gunther just. Here comes the Slim Jim car. Who is dressed up? No, it's, it's entertaining. The, the wrestling can be entertaining. That's fine. It's not as entertaining. But we don't need Gunther making a mockery of. You know, okay, we got Kofi and. As long as we get a Gunther no, that acts like. Cave, Kofi and Xavier Woods, the new day in the Slim Jim truck. It was LA Knight last, last time. He's wearing LA an old Knight. school uh, Survivor Series shirt. Slim Jim uh, Carr, sorry. Old school Survivor Series shirt on Xavier Woods. But if you was to make Gunther a joke, he'd probably quit. If he was supposed to be acting like our truth and Miz, he'd probably quit. I'm not asking for that, but give me a little bit more than just walk to the ring and stare at everybody. Well, he gives you he gives you everything you need. Well, to credit the Miz, he did well for himself. Miz had a he comeback, did. and I was very impressed. He he, uh, well. he he tried to hurt Gunther with the um the ring the ring general the ring post, the got, ring a post. Low blow in. got a low blow in, and but it was then not enough. Distracted the ref, skull crushed the uh, skull crushing finale. And it wasn't enough. You're right. And it was never going to be enough. <laughs> <laughs> See, he was like, this is just, all of it's just scripted. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, we can just make the Miz win. It's not like that. I mean, they could. Just make, they yeah, could. They could, but they just can't just make the Miz win. It makes absolute, well, they got there, sold the uh, shoulder into the turnbuckle for all of two seconds. He did, he two did. seconds sell the shoulder Brody least. I mean, bro what was that? I mean, Bruiser Brody. Gunther no sold that shoulder into the steel turnbuckle. You're right. It was bad. Asshole. They were covering the mic. Oops. Um, so yeah, that match was good. Yeah. It was. I hope uh the mic picked up. They heard the everything. Yeah, okay. Okay. Well done. Yeah. Ended with the Boston Crab. Boston Crab. Yeah, and he tapped out like a uh, weenie. Miz was close pretty quick. Close to the ropes and crawling towards the ropes. And Gunther pulled him back into the middle. Full hand. He, he had to do the little tiny, you know, baby <laughs> tap out and shit. See? He proved our point <laughs> without us having to really prove the point that we're trying to make here on the Miz. He made it himself by tapping out the way he did. Roll it back. He hasn't won a singles match in yeah, roll 20 that years, back too. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. Yep. Yep. He's as worthless as foreskin. <laughs> better luck next time, man. <laughs> better luck next time, is. It was expected. You're not Gunther has been dominant, and he will continue to be dominant. I see Kaiser getting it before anybody. Ooh, that would be interesting. I've seen that rumor. A nice breakdown in the in the Imperium, and Kaiser takes over. Kaiser is the second. Toughest out of the rest of them. He's been losing some, but I mean, you know, it comes with the territory of wrath. So you're going to start with Vinci and then go to Gunther? Or is it going to. I think. Just, I don't know. I just feel like Kaiser is next to him in the kind of championship. He's taking enough shit from Gunther. It's interesting to see where they're going with that. I, don't, I just don't see Imperium breaking up. They've lost members, but they've never broken up. So then Fully. Kaiser goes on his way, and then they bring in another Imperium <coughs> member later. That's why I say Kaiser deserves it, because Kaiser stuck with Gunther through the name changes and all that. Even Giovanni did, but Giovanni broke away from the group, did his own thing as Giovanni, Vic, uh, whatever, Vinci. So he did that by himself. That was a solo thing. And then they brought him back in the Imperium, and he just left his name the same. Because everybody knew it was Fabian Eichner anyway, so there was no point in going back to Fabian Eichner. 
and then change it from there. Mm. His name was already changed. So then they were like, well, Kaiser's got to change his name. And then Gunther had to go from Walter to Gunther. Kaiser, I don't remember what Kaiser's name was before. It's the only one I can't remember his damn name. I don't remember. But I know Fabian Eichner and something, but yeah. That was a good match. Then we had Santos versus Dragon Lee. Yeah. And that match was pretty damn good. There was so much in that match, dude. I wrote it on a lot of stuff. So we had a Hurricane Rana off the apron straight to the outside, like right at the beginning, early on in the match. Hurricane. Hurricane Rana. Dragon Lee jumped. Hurricane Rana. Santos off the apron and then proceeded to turn around suicide dive straight out of the ring onto him. That was pretty dope. Um, yeah, Dragon Lee running need got a two a two count. Santos took a super hurricane runner off the top rope. They were yeah. both on the top rope. That was pretty dope. It was close being this though. It was close. Dragon came through with a tilt-a-whirl in a run-through, and Santos, and powerbomb Santos with a sit-out powerbomb. That was pretty dope. Yeah, I like that. It was a good one. They did the same spot. Santos, you know, breaking Ray's leg. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dragon Lee. Before the bat. Mm-hmm. That was pretty early in the match. Oh, Santos tried to rip off <laughs> Dragon Lee's mask. And we know that is a big no-no in the Mexican culture. That was a quick way to get heat. To get heat. The crowd started chanting asshole, and you couldn't understand any, like, actually understand what they were saying, but we thought they were chanting asshole, which it was an asshole move. Mommy. Uh, Dragon Lee, no. Escobar won the match, though, between Dragon Lee and Escobar. It was a good match. Yeah, you hit him with the two moves. South of the Border Destroyer. South of the Border yeah, Destroyer. South of the Border Destroyer. Uh, the, uh, Williams be proud. The Canadian Destroyer. What? Did you notice a difference between the South of the Border Destroyer and the Canadian Destroyer? I didn't catch it as there was. Hmm. I think he just named it different because he's from Mexico. Okay. Yeah. Rhea looks like a Manson because of the makeup. I told you, she is the female Marilyn Manson, she's dude. Smear, she looks she smeared like Manson. Yeah. I don't know, it looks really dope. It's really metal looking, dude. Yeah, Rhea Ripley's out here looking good. It was really smoky. She got a smoky lip. Mm. So Rhea Ripley versus Zoe Stark. Rhea and Zoe starting out the entrances. Looks like she has some Shawn Michaels gear. It's like a black Gunther with... Oh, not a black Gunther. A black Joker is what I meant. So. Gunther came out of my mouth because I was thinking we just swallowed that. What's up? A black Joker with her smoky lips out. The smear. All right. We will be back. Simultaneously. And we're back, guys. And we want to like and subscribe and all that stuff. This is very exciting Survivor Series here. Yeah, we're going to put on a show here. Like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Tell us what you want to see. That was one thing that happened. It's better than the rest Talk of the Talk about card. the best thing that happened last the show. What, no, the wait. The wait. Well, I've waited a long time anyway, so we're good. We can wait so long. Length, length of more a long time. Yeah, are we going in order? Hmm. Yeah. So we got Rhea Ripley versus. So we have Rhea Zoe Ripley Starks. versus Zoe Starks. This is our last thing that we didn't talk about yet. Um, so Rhea, Zoe had Rhea like really on the ropes for most of that match. I feel like early, early on in the match. Yeah. yeah. She was whooping that ass. Yeah. For a while. And then Rhea got dominant later on, and. Was her normal dominant self. Um, let's see. I thought she had a tattoo on her butt. 
cheeks like but it's not it was just part of oh her yeah tight. there was one thing that zoe did that was really big i literally thought I, she got so inside of her butt cheeks tattoo she man. her and Rhea were on the apron on the outside Why did she do that on the outside of the apron and zoe dropped off the apron and like ddt'd Rhea onto the apron but she didn't fall back with her like she yeah. jumped off and landed on her feet it was a wild it was a weird ddt yeah but it was pretty different it was interesting Oh, just the way they did it. And, and then off. Rhea p- picked up Zoe in the electric chair position and dropped her into the uh, the ring post on the outside. I think that's kind of when the match turned. Like, Rhea really started showing dominance and force yeah. then. I liked Rhea's makeup. I thought she had, like, a Marilyn Manson or Moshless and White, whatever, her type of music <laughs> that she listens to look tonight with this whole Shawn Michaels <laughs> ring gear. Looked like Shawn Michaels' chaps and the damn cowboy stuff. I had cow print. <coughs> it gave me a Cowboys of Mumesa vibe. Y'all remember that show? <coughs> cowboys, no. cowboys of Mumesa. Mumesa. Interesting. Because it was Cowboys versus, like, camo. But I think the match kind of, it served the purpose that it was built for. Yeah. It made Zoe look strong. Yeah, and while enough. at the same time establishing Rhea's dominance. Yeah. So we still have to keep that in line. Yeah. Uh, I mean, until sh- they find a competitor that's truly worthy that they're going to put it on. Which which I was thinking they were like building I for Jade Cargill. I thought they were building for Zoe this time, but it didn't happen. Might be Nia Jax. Might be Nia Jax. Maybe. The other person that hurts people. Or maybe <laughs> <laughs> maybe Shayna fights Rhea again for the title. Why, why don't they just do a mixed match challenge and bring back Ryback and tag, her, tag him up with Nia Jax? So they call him Ryback Ry- 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 has to retire, man. Uh, yeah, right back. They, to call, they call it the hurt business and actually hurt people. That's the whole point of their tag team. Yeah, they're just the cleanup crew. When WWE doesn't like anybody anymore, they just put them in the ring with them. Like the three minutes of warning or whatever it's called. <laughs> Rosie and Jamal, Eric Bischoff's like, get them. And then Rosie and Jamal destroys like lesbians, old people, and all that shit happened. We had a wild childhood growing up, you know. But if I was a child right now, this is a wild time to be living. Yes. And listening and watching wrestling, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And music, you know what I'm talking about that, just in general. Like, if I was a kid growing up in here, we have some wild music, we got some wild wrestling going on. Everything is wild. I mean, we had a man drink blood on full gear. I yeah. mean, crazy. Wild shit. Kevin crazy Powell. Kevin Powell. 304 Powell. Um, <laughs> then we had the men's money in the bank match. It was Finn started the match. I felt like there's supposed and to be more. Seth came in and more, started the match. More on this show, like I could have swore we like talked about Solo and La Knight. For that the, was in for another the, for the. That must have been in another pay per view. Thought we talked about on the predictions. We probably talked about Solo and La Knight because we had just watched it on the prediction. <laughs> I have no clue, but either way, and then there was that Shinsuke thing we thought, which. You know, so Finn and Seth good. started it for the Judgment Day and the Good and Guys Seth, team. Yeah, Seth and Finn Balor. Yeah. And of course, no sign of the fifth member. Right. Nobody came team. out with the the good guys. Yeah. Are we just calling them the good guys? Yeah. Because they didn't have a team name, dude. They, they were, weren't they the were, Judgment Day. They were what Team Orton or something? They they called them <laughs> Team Orton. Or, yeah. Uh, team Cody, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, they came out there with nobody. They, well, they came out there. With all they four came out with all four members except for the mystery of the mystery. Which we all Tag know was supposed Orton. to be Randy Orton. We all but know everybody said Orton. it was supposed to be Orton. And on Monday Night Raw, Cody made it clear that it was supposed to be Orton. Yeah. yeah. But then we were still, like, when we didn't get them coming out there standing in the cage like normal, you know, then we have speculations of somebody else. Yeah. But. And then the third member that came in was John JD, Finn. and he brought in two kendo sticks for him and Finn to whip up on Seth. Yeah. They were taking him to Whippin's Town. And they caned him. <clears throat> they caned him. It was a caning. Another hard. caning. Yeah. We had a lot of canes in us, you know. Yeah, there were a lot of Singapore canes. Well, at least they weren't snorting cocaine like NWA did. I don't know. You know. Billy Corgan's show, they had cocaine on there. Yes, yeah. I heard. You see, yeah. 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 <laughs> wow. Well, it's all over the place. I just think their CW spot. Yeah, they, they were trying to get TV, yeah. I think they still can, you know. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of TV shows that have the usage of drugs, but I don't think it should be on wrestling. Although, did they have that drunken match, too, where John Moxley was in there? You had to take shots. <laughs> Every so often, you had to take a shot. Yeah, they kind were King Rollins. Then we had four. Entrant number four was Jay for the next in the match. 
This man kept up with everything. And he came in and did some stuff, evened it out. Evened it out a little bit, made it safe for his safe. team, Cody. For thought we were in war games. Safe enough, dude. And then we had disagreement. Because McIntyre wanted to come out there. But Damien Priest said, no. Let's get right. Playing it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Sticking to the plan, I'm going out there. Whatever that was. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever judgment they hadn't planned. I mean, they, they had something planned. They had something planned. But that plan did not work. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, Damien Priest planned to let Drew... I wrote that down, so I put Damien Priest came out, but there was a plan to let Drew come in first, like you said, and then Damien came in instead and was like, yo, stick to the plan. Um, Sami Zayn came in and brought in a table. That was the next thing. And then he pulled down a steel pipe from the cage that was holding the cage together, from like the actual, like... Yeah, the top of the... the what do you call it? No. Structure of the, the cage. Wrong, well, not the wrong. That he pulled out. Yeah. Um, and then we had Drew McIntyre come in with. He didn't bring in any weapons. Big super kick from Jay, and then they did. Cody and Jay did a one D. So Jay threw. Um, I guess McIntyre up. Oh, threw him up like, like he did, and then Cody came in to do the Cody cutter. I guess probably with the like a one D. It won't well, Cody. Did. It was, it was, it was Jay. And, yeah. yeah, Jay and Sam. And then oh, was that the, the the one Zane D or something? Yeah, Cody came in, didn't bring in any weapons, fought with them, and even did out again. It wouldn't be funny if like Cody Rhodes would have brought in a sledgehammer, <laughs> you know, going back to his <laughs> AEW thing. And then uh, Dom re- or Dom came in to fight out his part. Looking like a young Eddie Guerrero out there, boy. And he started to do the Three Amigos. He went to do the Three Amigos, and somebody stopped it. Well, it quickly turned into All Judgment Day. Yeah, it very quickly did. And they they took over and were running everything. They rough shot. Yeah, uh, triple choke slam. Yeah, two guys, triple three guys. Uh, two guys choke slam and three guys. Yep, yep. Didn't even see the Brothers of Destruction do it that. It was Drew McIntyre and Damian Priest, yeah. Choke slam. Triple you, choke slammed. Sammy. Like Cody. And Cody and Jay, Jay maybe? Yeah. 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 Pretty well, sure. Seth. I don't know. Somebody else was laid out because obviously you're missing one. Yeah. I don't remember who it was. Seth got put out through a table. Yeah, that's right, yeah. At he some point. Table, yeah. Oh, he got Razor's Edge through a table by Damian Priest. Yeah. And then, then could have been anybody else. Just when it seemed like all was lost, Randy Orton's music hit. Well, before that, hmm? before Randy Orton came out, Rhea Ripley came out. Rhea Ripley, yeah, that's right. She tried that. to cash in, yep. dude, right? She was trying to cash in for Damian Priest. Yeah, and that didn't go so well because Randy Orton's music hit. Exactly. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. what happened. You're right. I bet the crowd was on the edge of their seats going, Randy's a no-show, but he's coming. Just had gotten slammed through the table with his broken back, and Rhea tried to cash in the money in the bank. Yep, while Seth was out. Then Randy stopped it. Yep, which saved Seth Rollins. We heard heard CM Punk chants. We heard the Randy chants. We we heard CM Punk chants, Randy Orton chants. Pretty much, we heard that in the Charlotte match, I thought, too. CM Punk chants, and we've heard CM Punk all through the show, and Randy Orton at that match. So people were like, yeah, people were like thinking maybe if Randy Orton's not showing up, that maybe CM Punk's going to take his place or whatever, but that didn't happen. Randy Orton came in, finished the thing. Um, He took over, RKO'd people. Yeah, we had the JD go off the top of the cage into an RKO. Yeah, that amazing was moment. Amazing, amazing moment. Match. Yeah, yeah, it was a good. good spot. Randy picked up somebody and threw him to Cody. Cody crossroads him. Yeah, and Cody won the match. But there was also that one spot where they paid homage to Orton. They yeah, all did they the all DDT'd the, as Andy, Randy Orton the came Viper into the DDT or whatever it's called. Ring. They all did the Randy Orton DDT. No, hang on, what is that? I can't remember what it's called, but yeah, they all did that at one time. That, that was synchronized. That was pretty good. Yeah. So and then they won the match, 
And they're all shows celebrating. Show's over, right? Right? The, 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 the nameplate came across the screen and, and said, like, up next, press conference. Yeah, it's they true. they yeah, ended yeah. the pay-per-view. It was legit. And they were just supposed to fade to black. Yeah. I wonder how many people turned the TV off. Yeah, I, I know. Would, I would have just been like the nameplate comes, they fade to black. Like that's what happens. Yeah. So I bet Jim Cornette's going to have something to say about this because they book his boy right. But CM Punk comes out, boy. The music hits. We got the, <laughs> <laughs> we got the same music. He just was using an AEW. He's taking that music everywhere he goes now. He's friends with the band, so why wouldn't he have that music? He takes it everywhere he goes now. They same thing with Edge. probably sold him the rights and won't sell anybody else the rights yeah. if he's friends with them. But. Yeah. And so he comes out, and we got the whole, like, he kneels, does the whole clobbering time thing, and he's looking better than ever. I think he looks better than he debuted for an AEW, bro. Yeah, right? man, Orton both. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they look both phenomenal. Phenomenal, And all we needed from CM Punk tonight wasn't for him to be in a match or fight. The only thing we ever just need from him, just show up, boy. Just show up, hit your music, come out there, dance a little bit, fucking do a snow, snow angel in the ring, you know. Simple stuff. That's all I have to do. Go out there and just do a snow angel. And I'll be fine. Talk weekly. Up. Weekly, though. Snow angel every week, okay? He's got to come out there and say a couple words, piss some people off, do his Talk thing. Talk about ice cream bars. GTS somebody. <laughs> like, just do your thing, and I'm good for it. I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here for everything he's got to do. I don't care if he wrestles or not. Well, I know we all don't like CM Punk. Yeah. But it'll just be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's how I feel about it. If he does actually turn out to be okay this time and not be an asshole, then I will be okay with it until he fucks up again. Yeah, we're looking he, at you. When, yeah. well, when was he an asshole or was he just protecting himself? Protecting the business. And that gets very hard. That gets very hard to do is protecting the business. And you'll eat shit for t- protecting the business. Or so a lot of people on Squared Circle, the subreddit. <laughs> They weren't too happy about seeing Punk. <laughs> so. There's quite a few people that's not happy. Yeah. yeah. But who cares about that? It's been pattern. I'm I'm saying it. It's been a pattern. It's going to continue. Guess what people are doing he tomorrow? He fucked up I mean, in Monday. WWE. He fucked up in AEW. When he fucks up again, don't be surprised and don't come crying to me when your boy's I fired. I never cried once. Don't come crying to me. I only cried when, when he left nine fired. years. He left nine years, and I'm good with seeing a lot of them now. It's, it's unemployable phenomenal. anywhere besides well, he left OVW. WWE on his own accord. Yeah. The first time. Yeah. They said they would never hire him back. What all? Oh, they always <laughs> did. He brings in money. You getting hired back, bro. Looks like that. Yeah. It's proven to be wrong. Yeah, he's the man, dude. He literally just, did you see what he just did? Music hits. He didn't even have to come out there. People were just going bananas before he even walked out that curtain. Because we know that music's not being played. His Titan Tron is not being played if he's not showing up. We already know that. Unless he's in the storyline already back in the day, they'd play it for no reason. But you know, not we'll now. He might have just showed up. And just to show up. And, and yeah, he ain't even going to be on TV. So he might not. My cousin Mark brought up a good point because he's interested in wrestling too. And he asked me about our podcast. Well, I told him about our podcast. And then, yeah. But anyway... He said they could bring him back on a limited schedule, and at that point, there's only so much he could fuck up. And maybe I agree <laughs> with that. There's only so much he could fuck up. Well, maybe it's if he if he would just be treated right, he wouldn't have to fuck shit up. And controversy or not, CM Punk is 45. Yeah. So he's up, going up there in age. And he's just go ahead and finish his career out. smoking very good when I tried to smoke it earlier. You might have to stir it up. Or like red velvet, stir it up, stir it up, stir it up. Uh-huh. Well, I don't know what I do. I have another toothpick. Oh, I have another toothpick. Do you? All right. It's been a great Has night. Has this been the highest fuck podcast? Man, I don't know. CM Punk's back. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, uh-huh, losers. God damn it. Yeah, if you don't like what I'm saying, just like and subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe. People don't like what Jim Hit Cornette says. Hit that notification says. bell. And I still listen to him. So. Follow us on Twitter. X. Hi, F. Pod. Wrestling at 12. Tense. TikTok. I just uh, high, almost high said F, uh, Tense high Instagram. F, high high Instagram. EF Wrestling. Instagram. TikTok. High EF Wrestling. You can follow me at Kyle Foster Music. I do have a Twitter, but I really tweet. Maybe I'll start. 
I don't really tweet, tweet about wrestling stuff. The artist formerly really known I just, as at, at Twitter. Um, and then also okay, this is hit up weird. local vape shops. I just poked a hole through the whole thing. In Danville, Virginia. Everywhere. Like really. All in there. Cane Creek. Look at that. And the Southwood Plaza Tobacco and Vape. And this has been the Highest Fuck Podcast with your boys, Matt Jackson, Jedi Joe, motherfucking cool, and our friend, Kyle Cage Foster. And we are out. And that is that Kyle Cage Foster music on YouTube. Go check them out. We are out. Like, like Elvis, Elvis Presley. Presley.